Oh, he, he shot into the ground. Hi guys, this is Matthias coming at you here with a beginner's guide about tanks. And since it is a beginner's guide, none of the tanks that I'll be using here will be upgraded, or at least not fully upgraded. Some of them might have uh, one or two upgrades actually, but nothing too deciding. Now tanks in general in Battlefield 5 are very very slow, and that's not only about the driving back and forward, but it's also about turning the turret and turning the tank itself around. The exceptions of course being the light tanks, which on the allied side is a stack hound. Now the way I see it, tanks in Battlefield 5 is quite a lot more limiting than the tanks in Battlefield 1, even though they have a lot of similarities, movement speed being one of them. Positioning, planning ahead and being strategical is something that probably is important for tanking in any game, but it's probably even more important in Battlefield 5 than in any of the previous Battlefield games, at least in my experience. Now one of the most deciding factors to whether or not you're going to like tanking in Battlefield 5 if tanking is your playstyle is going to be your choice of a tank. You have 5 choices for the Allies and 5 choices for the German Empire. And this one, the Churchill MK7, is the one that I would recommend you to use if you wanted to play a heavy tank while being part of the allied forces, but you really value having a turning turret. Until you're fully familiar with the allied tanks, it's very easy to confuse this tank with the Churchill gun carrier, and the gun carrier does not have a rotating turret. As I'm sure you also noticed in the very beginning of the video, countering tanks can also provide you with a variety of different new challenges. Maybe that oh, guy shit. killing himself trying to damage my tank actually hit an invisible wall. And also on a side note, the weak point versus the strong points of tanks are much more oh, different in this game than in Battlefield 1. And that combined with right attrition of course makes hitting the right area of the tank even more so important. What's important for you as a tanker is, among other things, knowing the environment, being able to predict the enemy's movement, and having a planned ahead escape route. Now, your tank will also run out of ammo, so you need to resupply it at certain resupply stations that look a bit different from the ones that resupplies infantry. Now, based on the mechanics of tanks in general, if you can find those areas of the map where you can basically spam shells into choke points, then that's probably going to be one of the easiest ways for you to unlock those specializations that you most likely want to have. Also remember that if you get a kill in an area that seems rather protected, then it's very likely that a squad mate or a medic is going to go there and try to revive that dead enemy. So if you are more like me and you don't really like those big, heavy and slow moving tanks that is the majority of the tanks in Battlefield 5, then this, the Staghound, might actually be your option playing for the Allies. Now to be fair, this is probably more of an armored car than a tank, but uh, yeah. Now by the time that you're watching this video, this Staghound is for me fully upgraded and has a completely different main gun. But a couple of things that is worth knowing about this tank is that, first and foremost, Shooting while driving is quite difficult. Your gun is going to jump in all kinds of directions, you don't have much splash damage, and your weapons are not going to break walls. The normal strategy of just uh, destroying the wall that an enemy is hiding behind does not work with the default weapon of the Staghound. It's also important to remember that it's weak against enemy armor, so if you engage against another tank, then you want to make sure that either that tank is very damaged from before, or that it's occupied fighting something else. Notice also that, and I try to do this with all tanks, once I've fired a shot with the primary, I instantly switch to the secondary and try to deal damage with the chain gun. Now this might seem unnecessary against tanks, but the fact is that almost all tanks have at oh least yeah, one baby. gunner seat that leaves the gunner exposed, but it's also common that people will jump out of the tank while in combat and try to help out as infantry. Whoa! Two damage. I do no damage to this guy. Look at the damage. Now, vehicles in general benefit a lot from upgrades in Battlefield 5. More so, in my opinion at least, than infantry. And unless you have a tank that is upgraded to deal with enemy tanks, then you're probably going to be rather weak against it, especially if you have a light tank. Notice how little damage I deal with each shot here. 
Now the tank that we're facing here, I think it's one of those reinforcement tanks that you can call in once your squad has enough points for it. Just the same way as you call in uh, a V1 rocket. Again, you see me using that technique of shooting once with the primary, and then while in the reloading animation, I switch to the secondary and keep firing. Many times I find that to be the most effective way against enemy infantry. Now, if you want a powerful tank for the German Empire and you don't mind being slow, then this, the Tiger I, this very iconic World War II tank, is probably the one for you. Now, with the turrets being very limited in its uh, turning speed and also in how much you can aim up and down, you're probably not going to shoot down as many planes in Battlefield 5 as you did in Battlefield 1, if that was something you did on a regular basis. What I believe is going to be more important is that you're so limited in your ability to aim down on the ground that any enemy that is close to you is going to be very hard to kill. And on top of that, enemies can run around your tank faster than you can follow them with your turret. So now being that I've already talked a little bit about the importance of positioning, I'd like you to pay attention to why I am where I am right now. I'm here because this is one of those places where you have these resupply stations, but in this case, or right now I mean, it isn't built up yet. Luckily in this case, I was using the in-game voice over IP to ask one of my squad mates if he could do it for me because I didn't want to leave the tank, risking it to be stolen. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, lol. lol. Yeah, here, here. With the tank. By the tank. Where the tank is. You see, here you just build it up there. Oh, you're such a hero. Thank you. Haha. <laughs> Holy shit. So here is the German version of that uh, reinforcement tank. Something that I did mention in an earlier video. And I'll say it again. Don't underestimate them. So now this is the Churchill gun carrier. And initially when I tried this one out. I didn't like it at all. And that is as I mentioned earlier because of its mounted gun. It doesn't have a rotating turret. But since this is quite similar to what a lot of people are experienced with from Battlefield 1, then perhaps you are one of those people who are not going to be bothered by that at all. But it's definitely a big difference and in my opinion a big disadvantage from most of the other tanks. It is however quite powerful. So yeah, you have the light tanks that are fast and agile and you have the very slow and powerful ones with very little in between. The way I see it, the medium tanks are basically lighter and weaker versions of the heavy tanks that basically moves just as slowly, but that is when they are unupgraded. And upgrades and specializations is something that we're going to look at at a later time. So I hope you will enjoy the rest of the video. My name is Matthias and I want to thank you all for watching. So here, if you press the same key as when you, uh, the same key as for repair is the key that resupplies you here. Oh, it resupplies and repairs at the same time. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, baby.
Uh, there is a tank next to next to my tank. If you can spawn in as assault and help me take it out. I need help, guys. There's a tank here, spawning on me, you can steal a tank. Take this tank, take this tank, yeah, yeah. I think you can repair it even as medic. You have to be quite defensive with tanks, I think. Which I am not, by the way. Let me see if I can get to C, maybe? Lost A behind me. How far is it to A? Two hundred meters. Why is it wiggling like that? Where do I get ammo again? Is that is that B? Is that ammo for me? Or do I have to go back to no the B? Okay, we have to go to B. Oh, what a gamble! 